Hey everyone, if you caught the poll results video that I published on Monday or watched the live stream from Tuesday, then you may have seen that I, like a lot of other people, have decided to take a stab at building my own rule set. It's currently just known as Project 5.4. And that comes from the fact that it's initially going to be built using the fifth edition rules that are available through Creative Commons, but also heavily inspired by some of the mechanics from fourth edition. I fully expect that by the time that we are done, this game will not be compatible with fifth edition and it will not be compatible with fourth edition and will probably not even really resemble either rule set. But that's going to be our starting point. Uh, I think, though, that you will see some hints of those systems in it when it's finished to, so you can kind of trace back the evolution because I'm trying to capture some of the best elements of those systems in it, but it likely won't be compatible with them. The first question that I asked myself as I was thinking about this is why create a rule set? And the the terse answer to that is, well, why not? You know, there's no there's no restriction preventing me from doing this, so why not give it a try? And really, I love Dungeons and Dragons. I love all the versions of Dungeons and Dragons. I have a special affinity for fourth edition. I think it's a really fun thing. And I think that this will be a really good project to work on. I don't have any illusions that this is going to be something that changes the industry or even creates a measurable ripple anywhere. It just sounds like something that would be fun to do with the community. And uh, if a few folks along the way want to support it, then all the better. Uh, if it manages to get enough support where down the road we actually think that we could do some formal crowdfunding and maybe put out a hardcover or something like that, then we'll cross that bridge later. Right now, it's honestly just an idea that it was, I think will be super fun to work on with the community and see where it goes. So a few things to get started. First of all, how is this going to work? Um, so... The design is not going to be 100% online with the community. I will be doing a lot of work on my own uh, in my own time. Uh, I am not a team of people. Uh, some others may have large groups that they can work with. Um, I am one person surrounded by a great community. So going forward, I am going to have a weekly members only live stream where I will do the actual real time design work. I'll choose some specific aspect of the game that we're going to focus on. And during that live stream, we'll pull that up and we'll we'll talk through it and we'll go through some pros and cons and some different ideas and brainstorm and try to refine whatever that particular aspect of the game is with the community live on that stream. And then I will take that offline and I'll work on some other stuff too. But every week there will be one members only live stream to do some real time design work. Uh, I will also though engage with the full community with uh, by publishing out samples on some posts. I'll probably put some stuff on my website, maybe even on the newsletter. And uh, I will certainly uh, welcome any feedback that comes back through comments. I will put some questions out there with some specific things that I would like some input from the community on. Uh, every week I will put out videos just like this one where I will give a summary of how things are progressing and some examples of what we've been working on and ask for your feedback and get thoughts on where we think we should make some different decisions. So uh, it will definitely be something for the entire community. Uh, if you want to be part of the real-time design work, then please think about joining and becoming a channel member. But there will definitely be plenty of opportunities for the entire community to get involved and see what we're working on and provide your feedback along the way. I have no idea when anything would be ready for like play testing. Uh, I think it's definitely something that's going to be measured in months uh, because this is a more about the process as opposed to the product. It's just something fun to work on and see how it develops. Over time, it may pick up some speed if we uh, get a lot of participation and we start kind of making our way through some of the initial decisions and we say, okay, we, we've got some momentum now. It may get faster. Right now, uh, it seems like it's going to be a, a very long thing that we will work on. And and I think that's fine because it's just it's just kind of casual. There are no tight deadlines for it. It's just something fun to do. And with that, you know, right now it's just a bunch of random ideas. Uh, I've been hashing about a bunch of things. I've been writing some things down, testing some things out to see how that would look and whether asking whether or not that would really work, jotting down a bunch of notes. Um, and in doing that, what I realized is that I, I needed to have some sort of, of North Star. I needed to have something that would help me make sure that we're staying on track. Uh, and that's that's where design principles came in. Uh, there, I need to have some core elements of the game to say, you know, why am I doing this? What is it that this game is all about? 
and those those design principles need to be documented so that every decision that we make gets bounced against those design principles to make sure that we're living into the core goals of what we're trying to do. Uh, and that's kind of really where I'm at now and what this video is ultimately about is I've been hacking away at those design principles and I wanted to take a look at them and share them with everybody to show you what they are as they exist today. And um, I'll give you a little bit of examples of how I arrived at these as the design principles and expand on a little what they need. And just remember that anything with this is fluid. Uh, this is all about community involvement. I'm, I'm just looking to work with the community on this. So if you look through these and you have some different ideas, uh, please share those thoughts with me down in the comments. Uh, as we go through the process, if we feel that that one of these principles is actually holding us back from doing something we'd really like to do, then we'll change the design principle. But at least it gives us something that we can focus on as we're going, and then we can always adapt it as we go forward. So let's um, let's take a look at the principles and talk a little bit about what they mean. The first one is embracing creativity. And this one to me is really looking at the notion that I want the players and the table to have as much flexibility to do the things they want to do. I don't want people to ever be held back because of the rules of the game. The most important thing for me is to avoid rules for the sake of rules. So there's a lot of things that you see in 5th edition and 4th edition that I don't feel are used very much. And by having a rule out there, it makes it more difficult to, to work with the system when those sorts of situations come up. I would rather simply not have the rule or have a much uh, more flexible rule in place. There's, there's two specific parts of the game that I think about with this one. Uh, the first one is when you're actually playing. And um, when I'm a, a game master, I am very flexible with the rules. I always interpret everything in a way that is going to be much more enjoyable for the player to allow the players to embrace their own creativity and say yes to things that they want to do. I will interpret rules in that way. I will disregard rules in order to open the door for the players to do that. Um, I always want them to be able, the the players and the GM to be able to play the game they want to play. And just as an example, I've had a lot of encounters at my tables where um, I've put a lot of time into an encounter and I've set up a situation that I thought was going to be the tent pole encounter for that particular session only to find the players sit down and work together and they come up with a solution and it's like a minute later and they've completely solved the whole thing and are ready to move on to the next thing. And I love that. I love having situations where the players are working together to solve those problems. I think it's a sign of a really healthy table when you come up with those solutions. And I don't ever want the rules to get in the way of that. I don't want there to be some obscure rule that gets pulled out and, and laid down and said, no, you can't do that really creative thing. So I think having fewer rules and only the, the rules necessary to have a meaningful structure in the game is really important. The second part of it is character creation. Uh, right now, with with lots of games, what you have is you you have these boxes. You have you have heritage. You have a class. You have a background. You have you know lineage, whatever whatever it is. Um, and the way you create characters is you take those large boxes and you rearrange them in a way to make a character that you want. Uh, but you're still kind of limited to those arbitrary boxes that have been put together. And what I want to do is take those boxes away and focus on the things inside those boxes so that every player has more granular choices that they can make and give them the freedom to be creative in the creation of their character, excuse me. Uh, so let them have all those different options and combine them in a way that they, they want to they wanna make them. And I, I look at this and I think to myself about multi-classing and how multi-classing in a lot of games is a is a separate thing that you do because you have a class and then you have to decide if you want to do another class. I want that to kind of be the, the default. There's no multi-classing because the choices are so broad that you're always multi-classing. Every decision that you make for your character is you're multi-classing, you're bringing in something new. And so that's something I really want to pursue as part of this game and to, is to allow that flexibility. And some might 
look at that and say, oh my God, that's, we can't do that. That's, you're going against everything that these types of games are about. But uh, that's kind of why I want to break the mold. I want to see what's possible. I want to, I want to allow a character to, or a player to create a character that's, that would be, you know, technically like a dwarf barbarian druid fighter or something like that. Some weird combination that if you were to do that in a, in a regular D&D game, that's what you would end up with. And that sounds crazy. But I want that to just be the norm, is that you're selecting the different things because that's the kind of character you want to make. Now, I know the the instinct with that is, well, then you're just going to have characters that are just all crazy and, and have all these powers and everything. I think that's where some of the mechanics will come in. There, I'm not saying that it's unrestricted. I'm saying that every choice that you have has a cost to it. Every choice that you make has a positive and a negative. And so the player still has to balance those choices and decide which which way they want to go and to build their character that fits their concept so they 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 can't just choose everything but they can have more flexibility in the choices that they can make so that's the first one embracing creativity flexibility rules only when we really need the rules next principle is uh engagement two situations that i think of uh kind of related one is in combat you're playing a, a fighter or something where you've got like a mundane weapon and you roll your attack, you hit, you roll your damage and you're done. And that took you about 10 to 15 seconds. And then you have to wait five minutes or so for everyone else to get through their turn before it's finally your turn again. And you roll and then you miss and you don't even get to make any damage. And so all that time in between, you have nothing to do. Your character has nothing to do. You know, you can certainly contribute and pay attention and, and try to help strategize and things like that. But but your character has nothing, has no involvement because you've already taken your turn and and it can get kind of dull for, for sometimes for those players. Um, and the same is true for when you're in a situation where it's like a social encounter and your your character doesn't have the stuff to do social encounters. And so you end up with these pockets where certain players are involved and other players aren't involved. And and it gets there's the opportunity where, where people can feel disengaged. I want to try to put together rules where no matter what the situation is that's going on, every character has something to do. Um, when it comes to combat, I kind of like the idea of just getting rid of initiative entirely, that it's about the collaboration of the party and everybody working together and the actual execution of it can happen just kind of boom, 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 and you've done the, the execution. And then you get back to strategizing. So as opposed to doing it step by step, you collaborate all as a group and then you just execute it. Um, and then when it comes to social encounters, make sure that every character has stuff that they can do in all phases of the game. So it doesn't matter that you're a, you're a fighter, you still have things that you can do in other phases of the game. And those things can certainly happen, you know, now I'm not saying those things don't exist. I just feel like I want to try to focus on making sure that every character has those sorts of things. And you would definitely be able to still specialize in something. A fighter would still be a fighter and a, and a spellcaster would still be a spellcaster, but they wouldn't be cut out when you get to those other phases of the game. And that's kind of my main my main point with this one is I, I want to try to make sure that we build the game in a way that characters always have something to do no matter which phase of the game we're in. Next is extraordinary powers. And this is where we get to some of the real key stuff that I want to do here. Because and then a lot of this comes out of fourth edition and wanting to be inspired by fourth edition. Uh, I want this game to be not that it's a game that you would set in a world. I want this to be a world where you can experience it using the rules of this game. Uh, so the the stuff that happens in this world is is specific to this world. And these characters exist in this world. And you are playing these characters in this world. And they're not just ordinary people. In this world, these characters have a connection to the world that others don't. And those connections allow them to do extraordinary things. And how those things manifest themselves is different depending on what kind of character it is. But they're all amazing abilities that you can use and do things that most other people can't. And it's they just seem fantastical to the ordinary people of the world. And, and that's really kind of a, a key thing for me. I don't want it to feel that this is just... Uh, regular people just going out on an adventure. I want their. I want it to be epic. I want the characters to be something special, and they would have these sorts of of powers or abilities that they would be able to do and do just amazing things. 
And that kind of leads right into the last principle, which is the high stakes. Because obviously, if you're building a character that can do all these extraordinary things and they've got this connection to the world and, and just all these powers, they can feel like they're unstoppable. But I want to make it clear that they're not superheroes. And the there's an example that I want to use that could tick off any comic book fans that are out there. So please don't hate on me. I'm I'm not a huge comic book fan, so I'm sure I will use some things here that maybe don't don't fly. But um, the example that I can think of is Superman to me is a rather boring superhero, and the reason is because. He's basically seen as invulnerable. He has all these these powers. He's super strong. He does all this stuff. And so a lot of the stories revolve around villains trying to find a way to defeat Superman. Um, and so the stories then are not about Superman so much as these, these complex things that the villains might do to try to defeat Superman because he's seen as a superhero. He's invulnerable and, and all of that. On the other side of the coin, you have Batman. Batman is mortal. He's human. He can get injured. He can die relatively easily. And so the stories to me are more interesting because it's not about whether the villains can figure out a way to defeat Batman. I mean, he's just an ordinary person. It's about whether Batman can survive and outsmart the villains. And I think that's the key when I talk about these high stakes is I want to make sure that while they might have cool things that they can do, and they're definitely different from others in the world, they are not superheroes. They are not superhuman. They are not invulnerable. The heroes in this game are mortal and the, the rules exist in a way that makes it where they have consequences if they don't make the right decisions. And so the the hit point rules, the healing rules, the dying rules, all those sorts of things will support the, the notion that there are high stakes going on. And I think that level of mortality for the characters is a huge thing to make it more interesting. And that's where I'm at. That's, that's my update for today. Um, again, just getting started. Obviously, these are just the things where I'm, I've been hacking around and thinking about what some of those guiding principles, embracing creativity, maximizing engagement for the players, extraordinary powers for the characters, and then maintaining those high stakes so it's clear that there are consequences to the things that the characters do. Uh, and that's that's where I'm starting from. And uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to work on next week to, to try to zero in. But but there will be a uh, live stream for channel members on Wednesdays and we will talk through whatever that next thing is going to be. And I will look for the feedback. And along the way, I will post other things so that everybody can see what we're working on and provide their input. And uh, and I'm excited to get started. I think it's going to be a fun project for, for the community as a whole. And I'm really looking forward to seeing all the feedback that we get and all the different ideas that we can kind of pour into this and see what happens with it. So be on the lookout for some of those posts. If you want to see the, uh, the, the um, design streams and be part of those, please think about being a channel member. Um, but otherwise, love to hear all your feedback on uh, this video or any of the other things that I put out there on the project or any of the other stuff that we're working on. So um, that's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. Until next time, take care.